So what I'm going to start out with is uh, Dragon OS LTS uh, booting up with uh, UEFI EFI on, and you'll see it looks uh, slightly different. This is, of course, in a virtual machine. You will probably see a real quick flash of a, of a black screen, and so this is what it's going to look like. You'll boot it up, and the installer will go... Uh, generally, a matter of fact, almost exactly the same way, but now you have it uh, working in UEFI mode, and this is what it'll look like um, after that. <clears throat> uh, so uh, I'm going to pause for a second. I'm going to switch it over to Legacy Boot, which is what people may be used to seeing, but, but please understand this UEFI mode is there to accommodate uh, you know, a more uh, some of the newer equipment that's out there and you know it's pretty much I think on all laptops and desktops and stuff now so that's something that you'll have to address uh, or adjust in your BIOS so now if you have it in legacy boot mode and one second okay so now again with the system in uh, booting in a legacy boot and you will see this screen so you can see there's some differences. Uh, I'm going to just go ahead and boot right into the live machine. Okay, so we're back. We've got it booted up in legacy mode here. Uh, the incomplete language support pops up. You can get rid of that by uh, connecting to the internet and downloading the uh, language support. Basically just run this action now or you can close it out. It'll probably pop up uh, from time to time when you reboot. But that also gave me a means to put our little notification about the SDR Play uh, API and uh, terms of agreement in there. So I'll minimize that for a second. Uh, feel free, you know, you can run the live machine. You can probably run a good majority of the software with no issues, uh, but I recommend installing it and, uh, and not really installing it in a virtual machine. I'm just doing this for the video. You can see right on the desktop, we've got the icon. Just double click that. Run through the install options. Uh, I've been doing, doing it with uh, downloading updates and installing third party. Uh, that's you know perfectly fine for this to speed it up. I'm just gonna not do that. But what I am going to do, and I don't think I've covered this before, is, uh, well, two things. So if you have a, a, another operating system on there, you can see the example here is I have the old, uh, the last release, Public R2 there, and you can install alongside it, and then you can dual boot, uh, or you can erase the whole disk, put the operating system on there. You can also encrypt, which I hadn't, I don't think really shown that before. So we'll go ahead and, and, and add that option on this time. You want to put a security key. Uh, you can do, you know, of course, for more security, you can do that piece. I'm not going to do that right now. Now that security key will come into play when you reboot. You're going to have to put that security key in uh, before the system will uh, unlock uh, and boot up. So keep that in mind. Put your time zone. Create your username and password. Go ahead and click continue. Okay, so while that's installing, and, and I'll speed the video up, but a couple things uh, that have been brought to my attention. If you leave this sit long enough, the screen is going to lock. Uh, let me see if I can replicate this here. So if I say, let's see, if I lock the screen, you're going you're gonna to see this happen. If, you're, if you, know, you walk away, you're letting it install it, you're going to see other, a blank, and a pass, you know, enter password. Just enter live with no password. 
you may experience where it logs in and then boom immediately logs you back out i've had that happen a couple times just do the same thing again i've never seen it happen uh, you know if you enter it back to back no issues uh, something different with this build uh, is you essentially you don't have to do anything post install uh, I, I had already fixed the q spectrum analyzer so that's already going to be there uh, the when you install this and the first time it boots up on that new machine whatever it is that you put it on it's going to behind the scenes recompile liquid dsp because for whatever reason that was the one thing i, I it would seem like if you uh, moved from a and d to a virtual machine to whatever uh, you were having to recompile that if you want to run uh, say sdr play uh, supported uh, sorry uh, cubic sdr if you want to run this live you may find that you have to recompile liquid dsp and you can find uh, that in this folder here um, you can check out the site liquid uh, dsp look that up you get to the github page you know, you're essentially going to uh, run the bootstrap again or well actually run sudo make uninstall you can do sudo make clean and then follow the steps bootstrap again configure uh, it tells you all on the page and uh, you can uh, run that again and that should clear up your issues but again if you install it it i i'm pretty certain it's all taken care of another thing you'll notice is uh groups automatically include you in kismet so you you don't have to fool with that after you install and you create a user name now if you create another user i think i also have it to where uh, let's say we Say we add another user here. And you can see that person also gets added to Kismet. Of course not sudo. Um, if you want to or needed to get to root, you can do run sudo su uh, after, of course, it's uh, installed. Same thing applies. I generally don't use the root account, but you could elevate to root, set a password, and then you should be able to log into that account from the uh, main menu. Uh, I guess while we're here, if you look around in the user source, you're going to see that I've tried my best to leave, which is uh, making this uh, ISO... Uh, bigger than what it actually probably needs to be, but I wanted to make sure that everyone had the source code there for things that I installed this way. That way you could uninstall it if you needed to, update uh, or make edits or whatever. Okay, installation's complete. All right, we've rebooted, and if you chose to uh, do disk encryption, this is what you're going to be presented with. And you're going to have to unlock that before you can continue uh, booting up your system. So now we can see it's installed. In this case, I do have internet. Go ahead, install. If you have it connected to internet, if not, you can close out and disregard. Okay, just to show you, take a look in the liquid DSP 
and I can see here that uh, everything that needed to be is uh, you can see the date has uh, changed it's rebuilt rebuilt and then everything should be fine with a cubic SDR I don't have any equipment uh, plugged in really to show but uh, everything functions now without uh, locking up so that took care of that again the kismet part is taken care of the Q spectrum analyzer is taken care of uh, I noticed uh, well this has always been there but GQRX if you started up from the menu here it, it it really just must like this upper left hand corner it gets uh, stuck up there and I mean you can't really tell here my screen's so big or the so small anyways uh, but if you start it from the command line or the terminal then you'll notice you can move it around it's fine Let's see uh, SRS SRS LTE is in here and I'll make uh, separate videos on uh, using that you can see that the SRS GUI is here you can uh, go through and, and be successful on all the tests no issues there so I'll just uh, have to get more confirmation that with hardware uh, you know everything works but I will do a separate video on uh, SRS uh, LTE all in itself, as well as the other various tools. Now that I uh, have this uh, Edis bug that was just bothering the heck out of me that I found actually, uh, after actually getting hands on the equipment, I've got that uh, ironed out uh, now with everything. Uh, yes, it is uh, an older version uh, but because of the way that uh, I included GNU Radio uh, and, and for whatever reason back then with the package system, uh, that's what came with it was a UHD 3, uh, 310 here. And so now I have everything uh, to include the Lib UHD uh, and uh, essentially everything that's associated should be all on the same page now. The image, uh, UHD images downloader, I've already ran that, and so you should have the images uh, and the firmware or the images that you need is already there. Uh, Blade RF was fine. Uh, I haven't been able to check uh, Pluto and Lime SDR, but it should be perfectly fine. You'll see you may be prompted, uh, you know, of course there's going to be uh, updates uh, that come out. Uh, it just so happened, uh, you know, some more updates come out today. Uh, kernels and whatnot uh, I haven't seen an issue updating again I'll just reiterate uh, I've, I've tried to be real careful with the packages that uh, I've included um, it, you know there sh generally should not be an issue updating um, I just can say that as I take the snapshot and and where it's at when I'm done I have tried to which is very time consuming literally try to go through every single program um, oh which brings me to GNU radio I noticed that uh, let's take a look uh, at, at a program here uh, for an example let's take a look at uh, GRRDS uh, oh sorry And I know I'm selective here on what I run with sudo and what I don't. I try not to use uh, sudo, um, but with a lot of things sitting in the user source directory and the way I had to make this, there is some instances where I do have to run sudo where probably otherwise I do not. One thing I did notice within uh, after adding a whole bunch of things, a whole slew of things um, on the it's pretty important uh, it would seem that on the Osmocom sources and probably even the sync that uh, you want to specify the device arguments and I ran into uh, when I used the hack RF uh, 
it got picked up as like a UHD for some reason, but I noticed if you put your device arguments in here, then it uh, it does what you want it to do. In this case, using uh, just the HackRF tools and the you know 2018 or so firmware uh, to run it. And then if you had more than one HackRF, you could specify you know zero, one, two, so on and so forth. So. I noticed that that was a slight change, and I guess that's uh, when you start adding so many programs and making changes, uh, you know, just just little things like that. Uh, okay, I know this is lengthy, but I want to make sure. Uh, I hope I covered everything. Uh, I know even with just the install, a lot of people might not have known about the UEFI side of things and how to get that set up and why the screen would be looking different than with legacy boot. It's just two different methods of getting this installed. So now you should all be aware of that. Uh, I've tried to do my best to take away everything post install. So it's just done for you. And you, I cannot think of anything off the top of my head that you would need to do post install. Um, if I think of something, I'll update the description. But now that this is complete, I feel like I fixed uh, at least uh, one of the bugs that I accidentally stuck in there in the last release. Uh, now I can get back to having fun with uh, just making the various videos on using all the tools that are included in here. So, all right, I hope you enjoy.